How you all doing, everyone? Sean Williams back with another video for you all. Um, lately, I've been seeing a lot of people who have been, you know, making videos, and they're saying how, you know, they've been having dreams or out-of-body experiences. And as time goes by, it seems like more and more people are having these experiences. Now, you know, basically it's like all of these people, they're absolutely sure that this is of the Lord. You know, when they have they, these dreams and they're telling, telling these people these dreams, they're saying, you know, God has a message for you and he wanted me to tell you this and tell you that. Now, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be the one to say whether or not God, you know, gave a person a dream or uh, gave a person a certain experience. You know, I'm, you know, that's that's the Lord's business. You know, at, at one point I was just very dogmatic about no, nah, that's not the case. You know, um, but you know, I've had to kind of take a step back and and you know had to realize that you know well God is sovereign and you know if he wants to give someone a dream he can do that whatever he wants to do he can do so I had to take a step back and 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 not be like that but I will say and it seems like it seems like people don't want to acknowledge the fact that you know as believers you know we can still be in the flesh and the reason why I say that is because in the flesh you know we can be tempted to things you know we can have carnal thoughts carnal suggestions can be made to us you know through our through our flesh and it seems like you know people don't want to acknowledge that you know Satan or you know Maybe his minions, or you know, maybe just just comes from us, our own expectations. We want something so bad that you know, when it happens, you know, we just consider that well, this is of God. But we don't ever. It seems like a lot of people don't ever stop to think to say, well, you know, I had this dream, I had this out of body experience, or whatever they went through. You know, was it really of the Lord? And, you know, it's just, it seems easy just because we see all of these accounts in the Bible of people having visions and tra going in trances and having dreams. And, you know, all these encounters that, you know, because it happened in the Bible that it's like, okay, well, I had this thing and, you know, I believe it's a God. But, you know, I believe that we have to remember that when Jesus came on the scene, after he got baptized, you know, what happened next? It says he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And I believe on that 40th day, you know, Satan came and tempted Jesus. That Satan coming, having the audacity to tempt the Son of God. Okay, not only that, it says that Satan, okay, Satan led Jesus to the highest mountaintop and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Now, I bring this up because, you know, you have all these people that say, well, you know, um, you know, I was taken to heaven. I was taken to hell. Some people say that they were taken to both places. And, um, you know, if we can see that Satan would have the audacity to lead Jesus up to the highest mountaintop, you know, what exempts us from possibly going through the same thing? You know, what exempts us from Satan using his false lying signs and wonders to make it seem like you're, you've been taken to heaven, to make it seem like you've been taken to hell, and a lot of these people are saying how they've they've 
um, seen the judgment. And, uh, you know, I am, I am one who stands as my final authority on God's word. You know, to me, that's, that's the thing, like whatever we go through or whatever we're taught, you know, what, however we live, you know, we always use God's word, um, as our final authority. Um, you know, there has to be something that's just to say, this is the standard. And, uh, you know, as believers, born again, believers, we have the Holy spirit, but unfortunately, since we still have our sinful flesh, you know, it's possible for us to be, uh, tricked or, you know, just to want something so bad that we, we cling on to something that we really shouldn't be clinging on to. And, you know, because of this, we need something that, that will supersede everything else and for us not to rely on our feelings or our own way of thinking or what someone else says you know we have to have something that is above you know all of that and i will say that that's god's word you know if it wasn't for that flesh then you know i mean honestly we would do and you know be able and have everything we needed but since you know we're of this flesh this flesh and the spirit is constantly worn with one another and you know because of that you know i believe it's it's important to make sure that we absolutely understand what's of the flesh and what's of the spirit and i believe like in galatians it tells us what's of the flesh and what's of the spirit now we could be doing these things, but because of God's word, we can see, okay, when I act in this sort of way, it's of the spirit. Why? How do we know that? Because God's word says so, but if I act in this sort of way, then I'm acting in the flesh. How do we know that? Because God God's word says that, you know. So, you know, when these people talk about having these dreams and these encounters where you know they've been taken to heaven they've been taken to hell they've seen the judgment they're they're seeing they're in this line of people and a lot of people are just being sent off to hell and and you know you have people who claim that they barely made it you know and they would and the message is a message where they will start to talk about Jesus but then ultimately they cap it off with, you know, a work based gospel. They will tell you, you know what, you need to make up your mind. You need to get your life right. You need, you, you need to start living for God, living for Christ. You need to repent. You need to turn around. You need to do this and do that. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, we, we all do need a sense of urgency when it comes to living for the Lord, I'm all for that. Um, but my issue is when they take that message and they tie it to salvation, when they make it seem like, you know, the Lord gave me this dream, or the Lord gave me this experience because he has a message for you. And his message is to, you know, get your life right or, you know, you're going to end up like these people who I saw in the judgment getting cast in the hell or like the people when I was taken to hell I saw all of these you know some people say how they've seen Christians in hell you know if, if you're you know an actual Christian not not like to say a false convert or something like that but if you're an actual Christian it's absolutely no way you can be in hell no way you know God promises you know us eternal life all his believers all of his children is no way you can be in hell. So if someone is in hell, it's because they're not a Christian, not a believer. You know, they weren't saved. And this message, this work-based gospel that they tie it to is not a gospel at all. Galatians 1, 8, 9, that's another gospel. Anything beyond what we put our faith in, our belief in for our salvation 
is not is not a gospel at all. If if my if my salvation in, in any way hinges hinges on what I do or how good I am, I'm lost. And that goes for anybody. And you have these people who have these dreams. They also they also basically give way to the fact that you can lose salvation as well. It's almost like you can have it, but you know it can slip away from you. But you know the Bible lets us know, you know, we have eternal life. I mean, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth and work, no. I mean, Paul lets us know you can't mix it to that whosoever believeth on Him shall have what temporal life, no. Uh, probationary life. Mm. No, I don't think I'm getting that wrong. Everlasting life. That's never ending. All those who believe on Jesus has everlasting life. So how is it possible for you to lose what's everlasting? You can't. It's everlasting. That's like saying you can kill what's immortal. It just... You can't do it. So if you have eternal life, everlasting life, then that goes on without end. So, you know, these people that are having, you know, it's like this, this insurgence of dreams and people uh, saying the Lord gave me this message. The Lord gave me this, this vision, this dream. And I was in line and I saw all of these people and one by one people were flying off and being cast into hell and and you know I was terrified for myself and all this I mean it sounds good but is it biblical anyone can make anything sound good but is it biblical that's the question now when it comes to the judgment I'm gonna tell you something the judgment first of all there's two judgments there's one for believers one for unbelievers. Now, you know, it seems as such that that believers and unbelievers will not be in the same line when it comes to the judgment. You know, it, it, believers will be at the judgment seat of Christ. Unbelievers will be at the great white throne judgment. And we actually see that in Revelation 20. And in Revelation 20, you know, John writes, blessed are those who are of the first resurrection. Because it talks about those who are of the second resurrection will receive the second death. If you continue to read in Revelation 20, and it describes this great right throne judgment and how the sea and Death and hell gave up those that were in it. So these people are being resurrected again for their final judgment to be cast into the lake of fire. So, you know, it, it doesn't even seem that, you know, the believers and the unbelievers are in the same to say they're in the same line at the same time. And furthermore, judgment is not for, it's not to determine where you're going to go. You know, a lot of people, you know, believed, okay, judgment, yeah, we're being judged for our works. Yes, that's true. But it's not to determine where we're going to go. It's to determine what we're going to receive when we get to where we're going to go. Because the thing is, where we're going to go is determined before we even die. And that all hinges on whether we accept Christ or not. If you accept Christ, heaven. You reject Christ, hell. It's that simple. Now, if you accept Christ, your destination is, is in God's kingdom. And at that point, Paul lets us know in 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 15, 
It talks about all the believers standing on the foundation, that being Christ, that no other man can lay. And that at that point, it's up to every man to decide how they build upon that foundation. Some precious wood, I mean, some precious stone, gold and silver, others wood, hay and stubble. When our works are manifested, those things which abide in the fire will be rewarded for. Those things that burn up will have lost out on as a reward, but we ourselves will be saved even so as yet by fire. So Paul lets us know that, you know, believers will have their own judgment where, yes, their works are going to be judged because he's, he. He tells, he tells us that we're going to be judged for everything we do in the flesh. He tells us that. He did, well, he tells Church Corinthians that, but, you know, it's for us as well. But he mentions nothing about, you know, us, our works determining where we're going to go. Even if we have things that burn up, he says we're still going to be saved. But then you have those at the great white throne judgment that we see in Revelation 20, it said the book of life was open and then these other books were open. And they were judged out of those books. And anyone's name who was not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So, you know, the same way, and this is just me, <clears throat> me kind of, speculating on my own but it's almost like the same way believers will have different degrees of reward based off of their own service is the same way that it seems like the same way that unbelievers will experience different levels of torment based off of their offenses according to you know those other books that were open so the book of life is you know, that's like the destination. You're not in this book of life. Your destination is there. Okay. Now, next step. How bad is it going to be for... I mean, it's going to be a whole, beyond petrifying no matter what. But still, nonetheless, at that point, it's almost like, well, we'll see the degree in which you will suffer. And then at that point, that's when all of the works, according to these other books... That's what a you know a person's works is judged off of. But you know, all these people having these dreams, and it, it ends up with the work based gospel. You know, at the very least, please just understand that it's not works. You know, there is no amount of you getting getting yourself together, getting it right, getting serious, getting on fire. For the Lord in in order for you to obtain salvation. It's not possible. You can't get on fire unless you're already lit, so to speak. You know, you can't do good works unless you yourself have been converted into being good. So you have to be saved first in order for you to do anything acceptable anyway. But it's like this kind of a, you know, Muslims believe that, you know, they believe that, you know, are you going to go to heaven? Are you going to go to, to Jannah and Salah? God willing. You know, most of them, from what I've seen, say they don't know. They, they hope they do. It's almost like, well, depending upon my good works, you know what I mean? But they don't know. Mormons, I believe, are the same way. But, you know, if if our works have any determination on where we, we will go, I mean, honestly speaking, none of us are going to make it. I mean, we do so much evil. We do evil without even realizing it. I mean, that's very much a reality to sin out of ignorance, to do things that you didn't even know were sins. And this is not including all of the sins that we do 
commit consciously. And it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter if you do it to say, well, I struggle with this. I slip up from time to time. It doesn't matter. If you do it, you do it. Regardless if you are aware or not, if it's a struggle, a slip up or whatever, an accident, whatever. If you commit the offense, that's on you. There's no way around it. And you don't have to have a long rap sheet of things. That first offense is more than enough to keep you cast out. So, you know, and we look at James. James lets us know. James 2 lets us know it's not about following these these checklist of laws. It's about following the lawgiver. And you have people who try to divide the law. Well, I mean, I did this, but I haven't done this, or I've stopped doing this. And that, what, you, well, what do you mean, stop doing it? To stop doing it to mean that, that at some point you were doing it. And if that's the case, if that's what you're admitting, you got to pay for that. Well, you know, I, don't, I used to do this, but I don't do that. Or I used to abuse drugs, or I used to look at this, or I used to mess around with that. I don't do that anymore. Well, that's great. But you committed it. That's still on your track record. Still can send you to hell off of that. Unless you get cleansed of all unrighteousness. By one person. The blood of the lamb. So, you know, I just, I just want us to be mindful when we're seeing all of these videos of people coming on, coming on their camera saying, you know, the Lord gave me a message for you all. I had a dream and he took me to heaven, took me to hell. I saw the judgment. I saw this. I saw that. I experienced this, that, and the third. I saw Christians in hell. I barely made it into heaven. There were certain, you know, there were some sins I didn't give, I didn't get forgive for. And, you know, I just barely made it into heaven. There is no such thing as barely making it into heaven. Christ said, be holy as my father in heaven is holy. Be perfect as I am perfect. And he gave no, no wiggle room, no in between, no gray areas. It was either you are or you aren't. And the Lord is not going to allow any sin, any, into his kingdom. Any to inherit it. He's not going to allow that. That's the whole reason why he sent his son down. To die for sins. It's not like, well, he died for, you know, all sins, but... One or two because he doesn't really, you know, take them as a big deal. No, it says he died for all sins. There's a reason for that. And there's no way that, you know, the Lord is going to say that he didn't forgive you for certain sins and still let you into his kingdom. Like, that's what I'm saying. You know, we have to, if you yourself have these dreams, you know, okay, fine. But please, go back to the word. See if it lines out. And if you're seeing a video with someone saying that they're, they're having these dreams, these visions, and, you know, I got a message from the Lord, and he wants you to turn around and start getting right and doing this and do that, and, you know, choose today who you will serve and all this, and they're tying all that to salvation to like a work-based gospel. Work-based is not a good news. It's, that's not good news. Because I could slip up more times than I could possibly count. So, I just wanted to get on here and just kind of, you know, speak from the heart and just, you know, that was kind of on... <sighs> had kind of been on my mind and I just kind of wanted to get that out. So, you know, if anyone art is having dreams or whatever the case is, 
this is not meant to offend or discredit you, but you know, this is just to make sure that we are open and honest about at least the overall message that we're tying this to. You know, if you have the dream or, you know, who's to say that's, what, you know, that's between you and the Lord. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go that far, <clears throat> go that far, but understand Satan is out here and he's real and Satan can, can tempt you and provoke you just like an unbeliever. He can, he can tempt and provoke a believer as much as an unbeliever It's possible. If you're still in your sinful flesh, like, like the unbeliever has that sinful flesh. The difference is your inward nature has been regenerated. Theirs hasn't, but your outward is yet to have been changed. Therefore, the devil can get to you via your flesh, your carnal side. Your old man that's still in you. Now you have a new man that's inward, but you still have an old man that you're fighting daily. So just, you know, be honest. Understand that the devil can, he can tempt, he can suggest. And if whatever we go through, no matter how real it seems, if it doesn't line up with the word, then, you know, I would say don't, you know, don't, if, if the word doesn't, doesn't say it ex exclusively, I would say at the very most, take it with a grain of salt at the very most. But honestly, because I'm one who believes in the sufficiency of scripture and I believe the canon of scripture is closed, I don't I don't see the I don't believe that the Lord is 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 giving doctrinal revelation like that. I just I don't. Everything we need to know is in God's word. When it comes to doctrine. So just be careful out here. And, you know, uh, whatever you go through, just check with the word, see if it lines up. And, you know, all these people having these dreams and tying it to a work-based salvation, just please just understand that, you know, that is not, work-based salvation is not biblical. I, I know there are verses that they will give, but that's not the case. So until next time, I love you all. And God bless.